everybody. Happy Hanukkah. This is Karina at Michael's. I work at the marketing department and I'll be making this really cute craft today. It is um, a kid's uh, DIY menorah and it's using clothespins and upcycled cardboard to make the sturdy um, base for the menorah, the, the candelabrum, and some construction paper. So I um, know we're a day late into making this because Hanukkah started yesterday, but you know, better late than never, and we can get started on that um, today. And thankfully, this is a pretty simple craft that you can complete um, within the hour. Thankfully, um, I, I tested it out and the paint dries pretty quickly on the clothespin. So I'm going to go ahead and go the top view down so I can show you a little bit closer what, in more detail, what the finished product will look like and then what you'll need. So here's the finished project. And as you can see from behind here, it's just, it's just cardboard. It's just upcycled cardboard. And the reason we used cardboard um, is because it's a little sturdier. I do have also foam board here as this is just a scrap leftover that I had from another project. So if you have something sturdy like cardboard, which I know a lot of us has been getting a lot of packages in the mail, that, that could be good. I'd grab a piece of that um, or some foam board. The other thing I have, so I'll show you, is I got this heavy cardstock um, paper and I wasn't sure if, it, if it'll actually be sturdy enough to hold it up, but what we could do is we could test it out if you don't have something that, if you fold it, because this is one sheet, I just folded it, that might be sturdy enough. So those give you a few alternatives if you don't have cardboard, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and walk you through what we'll, we'll need. And here's another close up of the finished project before we get started on it. And this one's nice and glittery. I know the directions, uh, the supplies didn't have glitter on it, but I think this one was added to that um, base project. So like I mentioned, you'll need the cardboard, a little piece of cardboard. You'll need clothespins. Right here we have nine clothespins. And I already actually started painting some, so this package is open. And then I have some extra fine glitter. That's what was used here. So that's why I went out and got that. But you don't need to, if you have a um, glitter glue, you can add that. Um, it's really just whatever you'd like to add to it. We have um, three colors here of paint. I have this darker royal blue. I have white and I have this um, turquoise color, this lighter blue. So it kind of gives you some variety to the different candles. So each clothespin is decorated um, in these really cute polka dots and like little stripes and um, just all the, all the different um, colors of blue there. I also got, um, I have this gold glitter just as an extra. If you didn't want your menorah to be this color, um, you could change it up, uh, but I thought, I'd give you options there. So you also need tape to help put your cardboard together um, to shape it. And then you'll need uh, paint brushes for your, um, for your painting needs. And then I also have a pencil. Um, I'm only use this because um, it helps me create really nice polka dots for right here. Um, so that's why I use that. And then I'll also use some of my scrap yellow paper, construction paper for the flames here, for the candles. But I also saw a really fun idea where you can use pom-poms, yellow pom-poms as um, to represent the flame. So, those are the supplies. Do we have any questions on what we'll need or what we're making today? 
Um, we have a few questions um, on the supplies. Um, what size cardboard do you think would be appropriate for this project? Yeah, let's, let's measure here because I think we're going to end up getting two inches. Okay, so this is 13 inches, 13 by about three inches. So 13 by three. So 13 inches long, and that, that's including the edge here. And then it's about three inches here width. And then there's this extra piece back here that helps the last candle kind of stand out right here. Um, and then that you can use the scraps. Um, this is about an inch and a half by, looks like it's about the same length. So I'd say you need another smaller piece to reinforce the back. Um, about one an inch and a half in width and about 13 inches in length to kind of reinforce it so so i'm adding so i know right here it looks like it's um it's only eight and a half inches that you'll need but because it it um it's folded right here to reinforce it you'd add probably another two inches to it, to each side. So that's what I'm saying, about 13 inches by one and a half inches here. Okay, any other questions? Yeah, we have a couple more. Um, so how many clothespins do you need and what happens if we don't have any clothespins? Okay, yeah, we have, um, we have nine clothespins here. If you don't have clothespins, um, I'm trying to think, what could we use? So we could use um, construction paper to represent the candles. We could use um, chenille stems. If you had like pipe cleaners to represent candles, I now have some here, but. Um, you might be able to like cut up and then find a way to, to kind of tape them from behind and make them into candles. That could be an option. Someone suggesting ice pop sticks. That oh, might work. Uh, popsicle sticks? Yeah, popsicle sticks. Yeah, yeah, that's a great option too if you have those. Um, I was just thinking like, I, I think I have popsicle sticks. I just don't know where they are. <laughs> and so we have a couple more questions. Um, do we need paint? And if so, which colors? Or can we just use construction paper? Yes. Yeah, so um, you could just use construction paper. But if you have the clothespins, like, I think that's the cutest part about this is that there are painted in different patterns. Um, the colors that I'm using here are this royal blue, the white, and turquoise. Um, if you don't have paint, you might be able to get away with using markers, but it might be a little bit harder to um, color on the clothespins. Um, but yeah, you can definitely use construction paper. Perfect, and um, are we painting on the cardboard or putting something on it? Um, both. So we, we have um, painted on this cardboard um, and added glitter to it. So um, I'll show you kind of, you'll use your cardboard because typically cardboard will be, will be brown and so we'll paint that white. Um, but you can paint it any color you'd like. I know I've seen lots of different color menorahs, um, gold ones and um, silver one, so whatever uh, color you'd like, but we're going to make it white. So the base 
will be white. And then we'll also use a little bit of white um, to, to uh, decorate the clothespins here. Okay, and just um, last question before we get started. How, um, can you remind us how tall the 13 inch long cardboard is? Yeah, it is about three inches in width. Perfect. Um, that's it for now. I think everybody's ready to get started. Okay. All right. So I'm going to clear my space and get my painting supplies together because I will need my um, my clothespins to to dry. So I'm going to grab a little bit of. And if you have this uh, Creatology washable paint, um, or if you have the craft paint, like I have here, the craft paint tends to dry faster. So I like to paint, start painting with the blue, um, the, the washable paint first so that it can, it can have a little more time to dry. So I'm going to use some scrap um, cardboard here to paint my clothespins. So we're going to use nine, remember? One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, uh-oh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Okay, perfect. We've got nine. So I tried making this last night. These are the clothes pins I made from last night. Um, just to make sure everything works okay. Um all right, so I'm going to go ahead and get started with four, one, two, three, four, uh, royal blue clothespins. So I'm going to start with that color. And you, you are going to get a little messy here. There's no way around that. My hands needed to be washed, but Soap and water work just fine. So you what you may want to just protect your space, your workspace. All right. Here we go. And if you want to do a second coat, you can, but I I thought it covered pretty well with a with one coat. So I'm gonna to stick to one coat. And take your time. This it'll it covers pretty well, but you know, if you're not in a rush, it actually makes it easier to not be messy. So all right, that's one. Oh no. It's okay. You can wash that off. <laughs> I, I don't know about you, but I kind of like getting messy. Makes me feel like I really like, you know, created something. Sometimes you have to get your hands a little dirty. And some of you might have different brushes. I like the sponge brushes because they, they tend to cover a little bit easier um, than the brushes. For me, I use the brushes for detail here. And, and then I reuse them. So it's not like. Sorry, Karina, could you move your, your hands a little further? There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. There we go. 
Okay. Two. All right. So does anybody have, um, does anybody are celebrating Hanukkah or, you know, since it started yesterday, do you do anything special for Hanukkah? Put it in the Q&A. I want to hear about it. I, I have some friends who have shared with me um, some, some of their favorite traditional foods that they eat, like um, potato latkes. Some really good food around Hanukkah time. Well, people do celebrate. Um, someone is saying that they made donuts last night. Oh, yeah. They're making donuts tonight? Well, they made some last night. So maybe again tonight. Oh, they so. made some last night. That's Someone awesome. said latkes. Yes. Well. Someone else also made latkes last night and opened presents. Oh, that's so great. Yeah, I know. Um, I know every, it makes it an extra special when you get to celebrate it over this long period of time. It's not just one day. Okay. So I am painting the fourth clothespin here. And, and if you don't have all the colors, that's fine. You know, if you had just blue and white, that would be enough. You can simply create a lighter blue by mixing white with the, the royal blue, the darker blue. So I know I kind of cheated here because I had an extra color, but um, if you wanted to only have two, if you only had two colors to have, the colors to have would be that darker blue and white. Right. Almost done with this one. And again, I'm painting the blue first, this Nate, this royal blue, because it's washable paint. And this washable paint team tends to take a little bit longer to dry. Still not super long, maybe like five minutes longer than craft paint, which craft paint dries usually in two to three minutes, depending on the surface that you're painting it on. So I've got my four. What's next? I have one, two, three, four of the lighter turquoise blue. So I'm gonna get started on that one. Put this brush over here. And grab my clothes pen. So you can see this, how it covers just so much more quickly. That's because this is an acrylic paint and it's not that washable paint. Okay. As you're painting, um, we have a few other um, answers that came in. Um, yeah. Some people made some latkes from scratch and then they lit real candles. Some, wow. um, some kids did it through Zoom. Someone's actually make, making some latkes right now. Oh, that's awesome. That's yeah. great. Making says that crafting at the same time. Yeah, <laughs> multitasking. <laughs> Someone 
candles each night with prayer and then dances with with their family. It's really nice. Oh, yeah. Any any fun games like dreidel? Yeah, someone played um bingo and dreidel. Mm -hmm. Um someone else um did a puzzle with with their mom. That's great. So how are you guys doing with the painting, the clothespins? Are you finding it pretty easy? Do you need me to slow down a little bit? I bet if you're painting, you probably can't type. So I'm just gonna assume silence means we're okay for now. We have someone saying medium and someone saying um, if you could slow down a little bit. Okay. All right. So that's my second closed pen. I need two more of this turquoise color. And then that last one is going to be white. Um, the base of it's going to be white. And then we'll let them dry. And then we will um, start decorating them. So someone's asking what kind of paint you're using. Yeah, so this is a Craftsmart acrylic paint. Um, it's paint that's typically used for um, painting on wood and um, other surfaces. Um, I find that it covers very well, but it's because it's acrylic, it's not as easily washable as, um, as the washable paint under the kids department. So that's just something to watch out for. And so we did have several people asking if you could um, slow down. We have a four-year-old painting along as well. Oh, so yeah. They need a little time to catch up. Okie dokie. We've got, that's our third one. Just going to let it sit there for a little bit. Okay. Then our last one, last one of this color. And this is actually called turquoise. But again, if you have the royal blue, you could mix in a little bit of white and make a similar color. Just a, a lighter shade of blue. And that's really what we're going for here just to add some variety to to the menorah, the candles. Okay. So while you guys finish painting the clothespins and a few of you catch up. I'm going to kind of walk you through what were the designs that we have here. Of course you can you can do any designs, no designs, whatever you'd like. I also wanted to show you that I had gotten this really great assortment of pom-poms. So let's say you just wanted to glue pom-poms on your clothespins. You could do that too. Um, but we've got some polka dots here. So two of the turquoise will have polka dots. Uh, the four royal blue ones just have this um, turquoise and a stripe. Um, and then two of the turquoise ones just have little white stripes on them. And then the one right in the middle, the white one, is going to have just a multitude of different colored stripes of the blues and the white. So, give you 
gives you a little bit of variation and a little more interest, visual interest. So I am going to clear my space a little bit before I finish my last clothespin because then we have to get started on painting the cardboard. So I'm gonna give you another minute while I clean up my space a little bit. Now I'm going to use, I'm going to paint my last um, rose pin white. There we go. These are a little tricky to paint, aren't they? So if you're holding them like this, you know what? I just thought of a really, a lot easier way to paint these. If you had a piece of cardboard like that one, you could just have them stand up like this and paint them instead of holding them like this individually, like I've been doing. But this is how I painted them last night. I don't know how I didn't think of that little trick. That would have made it a lot easier. So again, I'll, I'll, I'll show you kind of what I'm what I was thinking would have been an easier way to do this is to have placed all of my clothespins on here on a piece of cardboard. Then I wouldn't have to be holding them and I wouldn't have to be as messy if I did that because I just paint them on the cardboard like that. And then I can turn it around easy. And then they could end up drying, standing up. I could see them. So that's another option for you. If you're, if you're struggling, like I was struggling with being messy, that's, that's what I would recommend. Um, so now I'm gonna Put these aside so they can dry because I cannot add my designs to the wet to the clothespins right now because the paint is wet. So I need the paint to dry before we start adding the designs here. Okay, so this is let's check the size of this. We had said the length was about 13 inches. This is a little bit longer than that. So I'm gonna trim off a piece here. Okay. I'm gonna measure where 13 inches is. And then, and then we wanted to make the width about three inches. So let me confirm this is three inches. Yep, that's three inches. So as you can see, this piece was a little long. So I have, I'm gonna cut off this piece. So if you have a parent with you to help you, I think that would be best. Um, because if you have a thick piece of cardboard like this, it's going to be hard to use scissors to cut it, but um, you, can, you can attempt to use scissors or if you have a parent around, have them help you using an X-Acto knife. So this piece is thankfully um, the, the width that I needed. So I didn't need to do too much cutting right now, but some of you might need to do more cutting and that's where a parent might be uh, 
able to help you better. So again, the size of the cardboard is 13 inches by three inches in width and yeah so we'll end up folding it in a little bit but i'll show you so the base uh we're going to paint it white so i'm going to use this guy since it already has white on it and i'm just using my craft paint here like i said i like the craft paint because it covers pretty well and it um it dries fast so we should be able to we should be able to finish this project in the time allotted and it looks like i need more white Any other questions, Jimena? So far, no questions. Um, we do have a few comments about people really enjoying it. And Good. We it amazing. Good. Thank you, guys. I, that really means a lot. So we want to make sure you guys are enjoying this. Um, we're happy that you tune in every day. This, this December, 24 days of Mary Making has been incredible. The number of people attending our classes um, has been almost record breaking. <laughs> we've never done a program like this. Um, we've never done 24 days of virtual classes in a row um, for kids and especially during the holidays. So thank you for joining us. Yeah, everyone is saying how much fun this is. Good. So you see how good that's covering? Like, I don't even think I'll, I'm going to need to do a second coat here, which is why I love that paint, because it's it, this is just, I mean, it's craft paint. It's to cover so well. And then the reason I'd also recommend like not needing a second coat is if you plan to add glitter to it, the glitter is going to cover up um, the paint anyway. So it doesn't need to be that solid. So I'm going to set that aside so it can dry. And then let's take a look at our clothespins. Let's see how they're drying here. So it looks like the white is almost completely dry. My turquoise is almost completely dry as well. So I'm going to go ahead and start adding the detail to the white and to the turquoise clothespins. Because those are the ones that are most dry. Again, like I told you, the the washable paint clothespins were gonna take a little bit longer to dry, but they're almost there as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with that. Um, so again, there are two of these turquoise um, clothespins that are polka dotted with white. So we're gonna grab one. And if you have a pencil, that's what I use for the polka dots, the end of the eraser, because it's like the perfect little circle. And then you just dip it in the white. And then here's an up close view. And we just dot it. It's one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven. Add as many polka dots as you like, or as little as you'd like. All right, I'll set it down to dry. Then one more with polka dots. So again, just dip it in the paint. And you dab it. And I'm doing it kind of in this alternating pattern right here. Almost like a zigzag pattern. Okay. So I'm done with my pencil. That's all I needed it for. <laughs> so I'm going to actually clean off the eraser part so I can actually try to use this later. While you do that, we have a question about the cardboard. Should we let it dry before adding the glitter? Yes. Um, so because because the craft, like it's already drying, the craft paint will dry quickly. If you're using a different kind of paint, I might try to, um, I might try to add the glitter onto it now um, so that it dries with, with the paint. But if you're using craft paint like me, it's not going to stick because it's already almost dry here. So, so what we're going to use to get the glitter on there is some clear glue. You can also, if you have glitter glue, like this has the glitter in it, it's perfect. But I have, um, I also have extra glitter here. So whatever you'd like, but if you have just the glitter like me, some clear glue would be great to just brush on to the cardboard. And if you want, because this is almost dry, we can, we can get to that after we finish the clothespins. Okay, so the next design we have on the turquoise ones, are they, they're just little, little stripes, little white stripes. So this is where I'm going to need my smaller, thinner paintbrush like this so that I can add more um, tiny detail. So I'm grabbing the first turquoise, a little bit of white paint, and just adding stripes. So while we're doing this, someone is asking, um, since we're learning about Han Hanukkah, is there any particular order the candles are lit? Do you know? I actually did um, find out that they're lit. Um, they start, you start lighting them from left to right. And then when you get to the middle, then you start lighting them from right to left. Um, if anybody can correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what I read. Um, that's the order. And then the final day, you light all the candles. So I did my little stripes. You can do diagonal stripes to make a little fun. Kind of a, a different angle or any design you like, but It just adds a little extra pizzazz. <laughs> okay. Okay. So let's see what else we've got and how our blue clothespins are looking. 
I think they look pretty good. This side is dry. This side is dry. This one's looking good. Okay, so I'm going to get started. Let's go back to our final project so we can see. So these four royal blue um, candles have just one stripe of turquoise and one stripe of white on top. So I'm going to do that. Okay. So here's the turquoise stripe. And it's um, the way this one is done, it's done about right above where the um, metal piece is, if you want to align them. So someone here is saying um, you light the center candle first, it's called a shamash, and then you go from lift left to right. Okay, so and, partly right. <laughs> and you use the center candle to light the others, and then you add one every night. Yeah. And that's okay. what that makes sense. Okay. All right, so I'm going to let that dry while we go and paint the um, the white one. So the white one has just a bunch of different um, alternating colors of stripes. So I'm going to start with the turquoise stripes because I already have turquoise on my paintbrush and it's fully dry. So let's go. I have one, two, three, three turquoise stripes. So one, Two, three, okay, and then we'll have a little bit of blue. I'm mixing my colors here, and we have th three stripes of the darker blue as well. And again, this blue is going to take a little bit longer to dry. So I'm going to set that aside. And now, let's see. Now let's work on while our clothespins dry and we wait to add the final detail on the royal blue and the white. I'm going to clean my brush off so I can be able to use it for the white detail later. I want to get started on adding glitter to the white base. So if you have glitter glue, get your glitter glue out. If you have uh, just glitter and glue, you can do that as well. I'm going to do half of it with glitter glue and half of it with just a normal glitter and um, loose glitter. Okay, so you can kind of see what, what it'll look like with both methods. So someone wants to know if white glue is okay. Yeah, white glue is okay. It'll dry. Um, because the paint is white, it's not going to mess with the paint color. Um, and it ends up drying translucent. Okay, I'm going to show you up close what that looks like. And I'm just going to brush it on. Okay. 
probably put too much. It's going to dry really nice and glittery. Ooh, you see that shimmer? <sighs> like it. So if you don't have glitter glue, I'll show you what we're gonna do. I think I put a little bit too much, so I'm cleaning off the excess. And then using my scrap to take that off. Yeah, I could have used so much less. I would have just, you see that glitter? That's, that's the shimmer that we have on here. Okay, I'm setting that aside and getting my clear glue out. Just clear Elmer's glue. Again, if you have white glue, that'll work too. I'm gonna add a little less glitter or a little less glue than I did with the glitter glue. And then I'm gonna just spread it around. I'm gonna use a brush to spread it around so that the glitter can stick to it easier. Okay, it's all spread out now. Now I'm gonna grab my glitter. If it's new glitter, make sure you take out um, the seal that was right here. And then let's grab a little bit. I'm gonna have to end up clean. I didn't have a, I don't have a glitter catcher here, but I should have been. And then you just dust it on. I love this. This is a fine glitter. And I'll show you the difference. If you don't have fine glitter, what it looks like when you um, when you just have that chunky glitter, because that's all I had yesterday. And it felt like it didn't stick um, as well as this fine glitter. Oh, I love the way that looks. I love the way that looks even better than the glitter glue. Like the glitter glue is convenient, but you can add so much more glitter this way. I'm gonna add more to the glitter glue side because you wanna make it look uniform and with the you can put it next to your um, your your menorahs, um, not too close, but and just imagine the candlelight, how it's going to show this beautiful glitter. Okay, so we're going to let that dry, and then check on our clothespins to see if we are. Good to add some detail, the finishing touches here to the clothespins. And then we're gonna need to add a little piece of cardboard for, um, for the, la the last candle, um, cause that one stands a little bit higher. So we'll get that going. Oops, sorry. I'm going to get a little bit of white here to add the final details to our royal blue clothespins. And it's just one little white stripe. And if it's not dry all the way, if you add enough paint on your brush, um, it should still be okay. 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 So 
then we add some white stripes in between colors here on our white clothespin. So, so while you do that, Karina, um, someone's asking if we have more um, um, more of these classes. So I put the link in the chat for you guys to oh. sign, see what classes we have and sign up. I don't know if you particularly will be doing any other class soon. Thank you. Yes, thank you for um, asking that. It, we have classes every single day from now until uh, the 24th and then of December. And um, I will be teaching one more class and that one will be I think it's next Thursday. It is, um, I'll show you what we'll be making while we wait for, for, our, for our project to dry. We're gonna make these really cute ornaments using pipe cleaners and beads. Um, so here's this cute little candy cane. These and this. Those are so cute. Snowflake, yeah. And this Christmas tree. So lots of lots of holiday crafting over here. Then after that, I'm not sure um, that we've got a lot of uh, of our different brands that are helping us teach classes. So that's been really great for us because I'm no expert in Perler or I'm no expert in um, in some of these other crafts that our our um, other brands are. So we're excited to partner with them. So while we wait for this to dry and those to dry, let's uh, figure out how big this piece, this cardboard piece is, that we'll need, and all, all we used here was tape. Um, so let's measure it. It is two and a half inches by about one and a half inches, okay? So two and a half by one and a half. I do wanna, uh, do wanna tell you one more thing. Uh, I wanna show you kind of what I had done yesterday using that other glitter. This is what that looked like. It was a little bit harder to cover. Um, you use a lot more glue or a lot more glitter on here. So we're almost out of time. So I want to get to that piece. So let's add, let's grab this piece of cardboard and measure two and a half. By one and a half. Okay. I grab my scissors. Okay. Now this piece is also white, so I'm gonna use this side to paint. It wiped. Hmm. Look at my hands are so dirty. <laughs> it's okay. The mess here. I'm going to be finding glitter everywhere, you guys. Um, let's grab this. 
So remember the good thing about this paint is that it dries very quickly. So just painting that last little piece that we're gonna need. All right, I'm setting that aside. So we're gonna need to add glitter to that. But what I wanna do next is make sure these are dry, okay. Now, um, I want to figure out where we're going to need to fold the menorah here so that it can stand up the base. So we're going to need to have about two inches on each side so we can fold that. Okay. Okay, it's almost, it's almost dry. I do also want to mention that it looks like the glitter glue side is not drying as quickly as the side where we used, just brushed on a little bit of glue. So there's, there's another score for using the loose glue or the loose glitter. Okay. So we said two inches, try to find two inch margins here. Gosh, I should have cleaned my hands. Okay. Clear my space. Here we go. And, and if you're with a parent, you might want to ask them for help here. If you're still painting, Okay, so I'm just going to fold it about where, and then, um, yeah, so I folded it about two inches, so that's kind of what that looks like, and then I'm going to find two inches on this side. Okay, around right there. Okay. All right, so I've got that. Oh, guys, I'm going to have to get some paper towels here because I, the, the wetness from the glue is making the paint come off my hands, and then that's getting all over my candelabra base. So there we go. Now the back piece, I think we had talked about the size of that a while back. That is about going to be about the same length as this. It's probably, it's going to be a little bit shorter. So let's go with 12 inches. Um, and it's not going to be as wide. It's only going to be about an inch and a half. So I'm going to go ahead and use This scrap piece of cardboard because it's pretty straight for me, so I, I don't need to cut too many pieces. So we said about 12 inches, right? So let's see, right here. Perfect. Well, by one and a half. So let's see here. One and a half. Okay. 
So um, while you measure, just a reminder, it's um, it's already five o'clock central time. We're um, almost finished with the craft, but if you guys need to leave, that's fine. Just remember this video will be recorded and posted on the Michaels website within 24 to 48 hours. I've just dropped the link in the chat so you can go there to watch it. Thank you for that reminder. Um, we're almost done here. I know I, I knew from the beginning that it was probably going to take a while just because there are quite a few steps and we have to kind of wait for the paint to dry. Um, but here's my little strip of cardboard and really the, it doesn't matter how it looks because it's supposed to not show. Um, it's really just supposed to add some extra support for um, the menorah so it doesn't fall forward. Uh, okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to tape it to each side. So I have my painter's tape over here. You can also use hot glue if you have a parent to help you. So I'll do one side with tape so you see. Just take that. Okay. And then you can have a glue gun. trying to add painter's tape, but it doesn't seem to be sticking. It's not strong enough. So I think they used hot glue for this one. So we're going to use hot glue here. And you hold it for a few seconds so it can dry. Ooh, I love the way this glitter is drying here. Okay. Oh, that's so much better, guys. That feels secure. Okay. So the, there's one last step to this. Well, actually a few more steps to this. <laughs> we need to finish adding glitter to this piece, which we can do now. And let's get my brush. And where's the glitter? Here we go. Dust it on. Okay, now we're going to add it, add some hot glue right in the middle here. So you can see that. sure that's centered. Okay, like that. And holding it there to keep it nice and 
sturdy, cleaning off my blue fingers. Okay, now let's get our closed pins. So the last piece, last step of this is adding the flames to our Kindles. So I want, I want your vote. Do you want me to do the flames using construction paper or using these pom-poms? You choose. Where, where we have one and one vote. Um, we have a three-year-old who's apparently very excited to, to see the pom-pom idea. Okay. Pom-poms. I think we're getting more votes for pom-poms. Okay, good. Because I was really excited to use these. I was like, well, you know, essentially, if you, are, if you only have construction paper, you have um, the, the shape essentially is like an oval a pointed oval to make the flames. And if you do um, just draw the shape on construction paper and then um, just repeat that step for all of the persons. So I re I'm really excited to try the pom-pom idea. So let's make sure all of these are the right direction. The pom-poms will go at the very top, not at the bottom. So, okay. All right, we got them all in the right direction. So I'm gonna make sure I have my blue gone, ready to go. Okay. Okay, let's see. Oh yeah, it's sticking pretty well. So there's one. Hold it for a couple seconds. And again, I'm getting paint on my pom poms, so clean hands. Next time, I'm a messy crafter. I'm really loving the way these pom poms are, are coming out. I think. I remember initially when they were creating this idea for this project, um, they wanted to use pom-poms. But we're like, oh, well, construction paper might be an easy alternative if people don't have pom-poms, so. But I'm, I'm happy to show you how to make the flames if you need that as well. So, um, this is people, people. sorry. I think a few people would like to see how you make the flames. Yeah. I'm going to pause that and I'm going to go here. So, right here, I'm just going to draw a pointed, almost like a teardrop. Um, you see that? It's almost like a teardrop because the flame kind of is that. And then what you could do also, if you're because you're making a lot of these, 
is fold it in half, fold the piece of paper in half, and fold the construction paper again so that you can get multiple of the exact same size. And it doesn't have to be exact as your outline, it's just kind of to give you the shape because you're not gonna see that piece right there. And now you have one, two, three, four of that construction paper. So does anybody want me to do that again? I'm going to continue with the pom poms. Okay. I love that this um, these pom poms have this iridescent glitter to them, almost um, these spiky palms, and it matches the glitter, the iridescent glitter we have on here. So. All right, I think another an easier way to do this would be to add the hot glue to the pom poms. Let's try that. Let's try that friends. Okay. <laughs> you all have got to clean my hand. I'm getting paint all over my pom-poms. I don't have a sink nearby or else, or else I would. Well, I'm glad you guys are sticking around for this. But again, like Jimena said, the recording will be available within 24 hours. I'm going to start adding my candles to the menorah as I go. So let's do one more pom pom. Two more candles, two more pom poms. Okay. So, someone was wondering what size the flames are. Yeah, let's let's measure them. I think. Um, where did I leave my ruler? Here it is. These guys, I made them, they're about an inch and a half in length and about an inch, a little under an inch in width. Yep, that's about, about an inch and a half in height and about three quarters, half an inch to three quarters of an inch in width. Last pom pom. Then I can show you our finished project and add all the candles. And although technically today we should only be lighting the second one, right? I'm going to show you how it will look on the final day. So if, if we're doing this right, we light. We light this one and that one helps light the second candle, which we would start from left to right, like you guys said. And now we can, I'm just gonna add all of them so you can see. I think my 
need some reinforcements. Need some more hot glue over here. I think the reason it didn't stick that well was because it was still wet from the glue and the glitter. All right, so let's alternate here. And let's do polka dots. Now let's do stripes. Now let's do solid royal blue. Now polka dots. Now royal blue. There we go. There we go. All right. That's the finished project, guys. That looks great. So here's here's our here's our two options. I'm sorry it's loud. My three-year-old woke up. Mom. All right. I'm still holding. Uh, so I think that's it. Um, any questions before I say goodbye? Um, no questions. Just someone um, made a comment that two should be lit right now, plus the center one. So that would be three. Oh, three. three. Okay, good. Yeah. Thank you for correcting me. So this is this is how it would look on the final day next Friday, uh, the eighteenth. So. Show, uh, please share with us, um, sign up for our classes. If you have time to do so, we'll have one every day until the 24th. And I'll be teaching again next week. So feel free to, uh, to sign up for the ornaments that I showed you. Um, and then uh, if you have your parents share, use the hashtag make it with Michaels on social media so I can see uh, your wonderful menorahs once they're completed. So. Um, thank you so, so, so very much and happy Hanukkah, you guys.